So when you're 12 years old, your dream is to own all the baseball cards in the world, right? Mm. And you do. Like, how did how did you take whatever whatever? When was it? It clicked for you that this could be a thing beyond just taking the gum out and flipping through the cards, and that this type of business could be something like this. You know, uh, I don't think I ever really imagined that it would become what it's become. I mean, I, I mean, we have almost 200 employees, which for for trading cards is kind of crazy. Uh, but when I was 12, I was I was hockey cards actually, and uh, ended up getting a part-time job at a little card store on Hurdle called Seventh Inning Stretch. And I, I love the man dearly. He's not with us anymore. Um, he was a great man. But the, the, the concept of capitalism, the, the buying and selling, which I found just amazing, uh, he, he wasn't into that much. And, uh, and so after working there and, uh, and, and going to UB, uh, you know, I said, you know what, I want to open a store. I pretty much worked for the man for five years for cards, you know, and uh, and so I said I'm going to sell my collection. I'll go off to law school or uh, grad school for psych or something like that, and uh, ended up opening a card store with uh, Dave and just and just loving it. And then I guess we we embraced mail order really early, and then we embraced the the internet early. And I was traveling all the time, you know, 80, 90 hour weeks. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. I don't miss it. I don't have to do that anymore. But it was a it was a great it was a great time. And then, of course, something happened. The cards really started to take off in 2019. They started to become alternative investment vehicles. That's a lot of people were buying not just art and wine and things. They were started by cards and, and invest in them. And then the COVID came along, and suddenly people were home. Right. And all collectibles, cards, comics, coins, they just exploded. Anything with a C. Sure. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> we were just in the right place at, at, at the right time and very, very uh, fortunate to be positioned as a company that had access to buy a lot of inventory from the card manufacturers. And, and it was just a perfect storm. And so uh, very, very fortunate. So even, even in 2018, I couldn't have imagined what it would be today. I had a Mario Lemieux, like second, it wasn't his rookie, but his second year. I had that at one point. That's Since nice you were a hockey guy, yeah. It's a nice card. I think I sold it for a set of Topps baseball. Uh, so do you still collect personally? Like, you have the store, certainly. Do you still have a personal collection? I, I do. I, I, I would say I, I collect uh, vintage baseball cards. I collect everything Buffalo sports. That's why this is perfect, perfect for me, everything Buffalo sports. Uh, and uh, Beatles and uh, Star Wars toys I had when I was little. Of course, I want them still in the package in mint condition. I'm that guy, but uh, I collect incessantly. We actually have a, I actually have someone who works for me, whose full time job is just to basically curate my collection. That's how how much of a hoarder I've 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 become. Really, that's crazy. Uh, and and talk a little bit about this behind us and and you know, the the yeah it was impetus it, of setting this up here it, in this incredible place. Yeah, it was it, the, the first thing I saw when. Um, after I got with everybody, and 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 this was going to be the home of the Hall of Fame, and they brought the display cabinets in that uh, the Sabers had had, and uh, and right away it was okay. We're going to need to get something special made, and I agreed to, you know, pay for it. And I had no idea it would be this amazing. Of course, John is an artist with 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 what he was able to do with it, and I just I can't believe how well, I'm looking at it right now. I can't believe how well it it turned out. But I recognize it's going to have to be bigger. You know, there's new classes coming in, and we're going to—it's it's going to get tight. So I'm, I'm looking around. I'm like, okay, we're going to have to figure out how to maybe extend it that way and start bringing it around. Yeah, I we didn't—we didn't, didn't tell you that initially. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's we're lots, gonna, of, there's it, lots of open walls. It's going right? to have to be bigger. I think we ordered a new cabinet for the incoming class, and uh, but I think I just think it looks. I think it looks incredible. Two quick questions. So, uh -huh. what's your best piece of Buffalo memorabilia besides now that you have this whole Hall of Fame in your in your uh, building? Oh my gosh! So, in my world, a lot of times best is synonymous with most valuable. Um, but I have I have things that my favorite things are uh, are pretty simple, really. Uh, uh, Rick Martin, who is my favorite player. My last name's Martin, and, and as a little boy, Rick Martin was my favorite player growing up. And I was fortunate to get to know him in, in his last few years. And uh, just a short time before he passed, I, I'd been given a, a Rick Martin jersey as a present. I, I, I didn't wear jerseys to games anymore. But I wore that one to a game. And of course, he was there. And uh, I won't describe 
how, how badly he embarrassed me for wearing it, but he, he signed it. <laughs> he signed it that night, and I think a few days later he was gone. And so I have that hung up, and so that has a lot of personal meaning to me. Um, but then I've got like a, a, a Tim Horton game-worn jersey. Those are very, very rare. I have a, a, a 65 AFL championship signed ball that was gifted to the commissioner of the AFL at the time. I bought that recently. I've got, I've got, honestly, I've got, I think, some pretty, I mean, I've got game-worn jerseys from McAdoo and most of the Braves and most of the Saves. I mean, I've worked really hard at, at, at putting this together. And now you're making this accessible for people, regular people, to come and see it. How does that make you feel to give back? The one thing we're hearing is even people that came to play from out of town is how the city embraces, how Buffalo embraces. How does this make you feel to give this back? Yeah, you know, in, in my speech, I kind of, I, I kind of honored... Uh, you know, Dave's not part of the company anymore, but, but his father, Fred Silver, amazing uh, golfer in the area, legendary golfer, uh, you know, he's in the Buffalo Sports Hall of Fame. And I, I remember walking into the store one day in the early 90s, uh, and I said, hey, there's this whole article about uh, Fred Silver. And Dave's like, yeah, it's my dad, or something like like late 80s, early 90s. And I was like, really? And then I got to know Fred and then went to his induction. And uh, it was then that I really knew this even existed as an organization because I don't think, really don't think that I did until 2000, 2003, something like that. And so to be able to give back to Dave's dad, and I met all the other athletes that I've gotten to know over the years through autograph signings or just, just seeing them at, at functions like this, um, it was a really easy decision when it was brought up to me. And it was over a lot of beer. That made it an easier decision. Sure. That's why you put the bar in, of course, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those decisions become easier. Yeah, Mark, one of the board members, we, were, we have a, a regular watering hole we go to. And he, his story is different from mine, but that's what happens when you're having some beers. And it, it, it came up, and it, was just an, it, was, it wasn't even any thought. It was an immediate, immediate yes. So very, very proud to be associated with it. Adam, thank you. Thanks for the partnership, and we look forward to many years together. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thank you. Awesome. Perfect.